What's going on, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? My name is Jacoby, and I'm sitting here with my good friend Cody. Say hello. How's it going? And uh, we decided to do a impromptu, laid-back, lazy review of The Wolf of Wall Street because we both have uh, both seen it. I went to it opening day and Cody saw it a couple days ago. Yeah, a couple days ago. It's fucking yeah. amazing. And uh, yeah, basically I just really wanted to talk about it. So here we are doing a uh, random review of The Wolf of Wall Street. Now what would you think of this film overall if you had one word to describe it? I'd honestly say fantastic. I'd say it's probably... If not the second, I'd say probably a close third for uh, Scorsese's best work, mm. easily. And with the actors that he's got in this, it seems like he's almost found like a new kind of niche for his style with um, Leonardo DiCaprio and he, maybe even Jonah Hill, mm -hmm. if he continues this trend. I agree with that. I hope I hope he works with continues to work with DiCaprio because he's done so many many movies with him. But honestly, yeah, like I love Goodfellas a lot. I think it's probably my favorite Scorsese, but this might be the second or third. Like, and that's crazy. I never thought I would say that this far into his career, after all the classics he's done. But well, no, definitely that's what I, that's what I mean. I mean, this this movie, this film, I feel actually makes Casino look uh, look almost more, tame. <laughs> yeah, it makes yeah, it makes it almost makes Casino just look like so much less of. Uh, full product than yeah, what this yeah. became. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's, you know, the caliber of actors or what I mean. You had Sharon Stone, Robert De Niro, those are both yeah. really top bill characters, right? Whereas here you got Leonardo DiCaprio, you got Jonah Hill, you got a, a pretty much brand new actress, actress that I, yeah. I've only ever seen. She was in the show Pan Am. Mm -hmm, but, which um, I haven't seen, but... Yeah, she's an Australian actress and she did a fa absolutely wonderful job. She was she was great in the movie. She was great, not to mention gorgeous. Yeah, besides the fact that you get to see her naked and that's obviously the greatest bonus you could possibly have. She is a beautiful woman. For yeah, sure. She actually serves her chops as, as far as acting. She actually has uh, uh, quite a bit of talent. I was mm -hmm. kind of surprised. Yeah, that's not a combination you see too often, nudity and talent. I mean, <laughs> you know. Sharon Stone, I guess, is one example, but <laughs> I'm not a big Sharon Stone fan. But anyways, yeah, this is um, The Wolf of Wall Street. I don't know. How would you even sum up this the plot of this movie? It's not really um, a biography of this man. It's just kind of like a slice of yeah. his life, his like adulthood. I'd say it's a classic like rise and fall from power just done in a different setting than goodfellas or casino oh definitely it's uh, like, like you said it was definitely like uh, the clear story structure for the rise and fall to, uh, from power but mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time just with that added mix of just even more debauchery and just, oh yeah just monstrous sort of uh, tendencies towards the main character oh i know that's like because we can all argue henry hill is a pretty despicable guy mm -hmm. in goodfellas but leo dicaprio in this movie <laughs> probably twice as despicable and he doesn't even kill anybody or witness a murder but he's, no. he's probably almost mm. twice as evil i'd say <laughs> the only time he might have killed somebody is when he's driving the ferrari they never really say much about that but. no yeah it's like by the way there'll be some spoilers in this random podcast if spoilers. you <laughs> if you ain't down go see the movie it's uh it's available now um yeah that's that was a great scene that was one of my favorites um i like the way score says he played with like you know what you see is it actually mm -hmm. you know is it through the eyes of leo or is it actually like as bad as it, it seems in some cases um and it usually is it usually is worse <laughs> well the double take on it's ingenious too not just because of how he does it in that scene but the fact that he almost does the double take as like this uh signifier of what the whole film is you know it's, mm -hmm. it's one story but at the same time it's just one person's recollection of that story yeah which might be embellished it might not like i, I am curious to know how much of this actually happened because this is a true story based on a real guy who um who released a memoir called the wolf of wall street and then there was uh, i guess a bidding war between scorsese and uh somebody else i can't remember yeah jordan belfort the guy who this is yeah. a truly based on who leonardo dicaprio plays he's obviously kind of a despicable sort of dude but at the mm -hmm. same time i mean the only reason to me that he's the most despicable is just because of how he played off people and took money from people who, you know, didn't exactly have everything going for him, which I don't know if that's just embellished in the movie or if that if he did basically just rip off blue-collar uh, blue workers and that's oh, kind of yeah. what he did. For sure. I think that is that is what he did. I mean, I my 
my knowledge of the stock market is almost none. Like, I don't really know how that works, despite my mom being a stockbroker. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I think he just literally took advantage of these people and, you know, profited off of them. But at the same time, like, would you do different in his position with his, his you know, set of skills? Well, see, that's the thing. And, I mean, if he was uh, – the point when he was taking over – or taking a um, – advantage of people who are you know basically just you know your everyday service workers type of uh, characters that to me is wrong but if he's robbing the rich and mm-hmm. you know basically skimming off the top by making them luring them luring them sorry into these you know kind of big fish deals on uh, small fishes and big ponds you know what i'm saying like yeah, on yeah. into those penny stocks and just banking off of the rich guys that to me isn't wrong fuck the rich guys yeah. i really don't give two shits about the guys that are like the yeah. ceos and whatever you know what i mean mm. that are making all that money well that yeah that was a turning point in his um his debaucherous career that's was, what i mean yeah. was when his wife suggested like hey you're ripping off you know average joes why don't you rip off the rich guys they have more to lose and that's when he elevated his business to the next level but um there was a weird same with Henry Hill and um, what's his face <laughs> De Niro's character. I'm, I can't remember his name from Casino, but they might be debaucherous. They might have this ugly rise to power. But doesn't it look fucking fun on the way up? <laughs> oh, it looks fantastic. It looks like a ride that I would take over and over again. Yeah, Scorsese does that. Does that roller coaster life story so mm-hmm. well? It's just like hell yeah. It's gonna, be, you know, you're gonna go over the edge, but boy, is it gonna be a fun ride down. And it was an awesome time in, in Wolf of Wall Street. Like, even in the bad parts of his life, he, I like. It's hard to feel for a guy like this, but I did feel for him a, a few times. Like, where, um, where maybe he deserved the out that was presented to him because he, had, like, three or four times he was presented an out of this lifestyle, and well, he just uh, didn't take it. See, and that's the thing with with Martin Scorsese. I mean, like you and me both uh, defer in opinions on uh, Hugo, which you know is. Mm-hmm. Neither here nor there. I like but, Hugo, for the record. The <laughs> typical type of narratives that he does, you know what I mean? Scorsese has a certain power over like other directors to just have you, no matter who you are, connect with such a dirtbag character. Mm. No matter what. I mean, I don't care who you are. You're watching Goodfellas. You want Henry Hill to get away with everything. Oh, yeah, you do. You hope it works out for him. Even when he's... You, yeah. And when he's ratted out, you're like, all right, cool. He's now... At least he's got a life, right? Mm. But, you know what I mean? Like, with this one, too, I feel like it just... Uh, like, the amount of character work that goes into this guy into each of his main characters in those sorts of films is so much further than what most directors are doing oh, yeah. nowadays or even most of the time period but it's uh it's it's fascinating to see someone you know still doing that mm-hmm. in this day and age mm-hmm. well it's a it's pretty much a given when leo signs on to a scorsese movie he's going to give it his all but the fact to like go out and uh get Matthew McConaughey in here, Jonah Hill in here, all these guys in here, and then give them a lot to work with. Like, pretty much all four or five of, like, his starting buddies, like the guys who all sold weed and tires and weed and this. Um, All those guys had, you know, like, a decent chunk of the beginning, and they were all, like, good characters, I thought. Well, let me ask you this, then. Who, who to you, do you think is the most surprising turnout role? Who did the best job that you weren't expecting? That I wasn't expecting. Hmm... That's a like, there's one. Rugrat, which is PJ Byrne. Uh, Byrne. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's uh, Jonah Hill, which Jonah is uh, Donnie. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't. I'm not too familiar with the other guys' names, but uh, yeah, yeah, those two stood out to me as far as guys who I would not. You know, I mean, I would kind of not usually expect mm-hmm. to see them mm-hmm. in such a movie. Absolutely, that I, think, I think this is a top top shelf film like that easily stands above anything else from last year. Oh yeah, this is my uh, this is my favorite film of the year for sure. That we had that discussion on uh, movie fuckery the other the other week, mm-hmm. and like because it came out on uh, December twenty fifth, Christmas Day, which I think was a mistake, but yeah, there was only five days left of the year. It's the best film of two thousand thirteen. Easily, easily. Like, there, that should say something right there. It came out with five days left after I've seen everything else two thousand thirteen had to offer. Scorsese hits it out of the park again. Because that's just what he does for a living. He makes he makes great films for a living. Um, yeah, I fucking I guess the best standout performance probably be overall Jonah Hill. I think because yeah. um, I've seen money like I'm a fan of Jonah Hill. Like I think he's funny in his uh, shitty little comedies that he likes to do. Like some of them are pretty good. Uh, like The Sitter, for example, wasn't very good, but um, 
uh, get him to the Greek, I thought was decently funny. Like, he's a funny dude. We all know he can do funny, but could he act? Like, I saw him in Moneyball. I thought, yeah, he can definitely, like, there's a start of something here. But this is, like, a whole nother level. Score says he just, I think, elevated him. Um, I think he's probably going to lose, like, the comedy-only thing after this. Like, I think you'll see him pop up in, in different roles from here on out. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt in my mind that after this, after the, the, the performance he was able to turn out in this film, they, he'll get multiple, mm -hmm. multiple offers for different films. And it, yeah, it really was a uh, perfect role for him because it is it's a more serious role than probably anything else in mm -hmm. his career. But it's still something that caters to Jonah Hill perfectly. Like it's, it's a goofy ass character he's playing. Basically, it's a corrupt, goofy ass best friend. I got, you know, the guy who you do ridiculous amounts of drugs on your yacht with, <laughs> and that's like that's a perfect role for Jonah Hill, and he played it really well. And I guess he had uh, prosthetic teeth in this film too, because I noticed his teeth were a little weird. They um they made him look really funny in this movie, like a classic. 90s businessman. <laughs> well, that's what I found funny is that, like, like you said, in Moneyball, you know, he did. Uh, he was ended up getting nominated for, for yeah, uh, best, best supporting, supporting actor. actor. But uh, you know, I uh, personally, I think in I in Moneyball, I found that Jonah Hill just kind of seemed to be playing Jonah Hill without cracking jokes. Mm -hmm. Whereas in this, it seems like he's actually you know developed a character, worked into this different kind of mindset, and then gone with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I definitely parts that seem like they're definitely improv with Jonah Hill. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And it's very fair to assume that they might have been, considering Martin Scorsese's history with yeah, letting yeah. actors do what they want. But. Um, I'm definitely feeling there was a lot of improv in this movie. Like, I'm thinking, like, a whole, whole giant chunks of this movie were improv. But that's, like, that's fine. That's where Jonah Hill excels as well. Oh, yeah, like, Jonah with, Hill is um, fantastic. Because that's, like, a style used a lot by uh, Judd Apatow, is mm -hmm. just get three cameras on your scene or four cameras, however many, and just let these guys go off. Well, now, I personally would say that, I would say in, throughout the whole film, out of all performances by anybody, including Leo, I would honestly say that Jonah Hill's is up there ag at least against Leo's mm -hmm. to say of who's the best in the film. I would definitely say that he's on par with him in this. I'd say, yeah, I think if the, uh, I don't know what the poster actually looks like, but it should read Leo DiCaprio, Jonah Hill, The Wolf of Wall Street, because those are the two main characters, in my opinion, anyways. I mean, the wife. I couldn't agree more. The wife's in it a lot. Um, the, so the few other characters are in it a decent, Rob Reiner's in it a decent amount. But, uh, yeah, it's a Jonah Hill and Leo DiCaprio story, and it's it's quite fantastic. Matthew McConaughey, too. You want to... What'd you think about his uh, little cameo? It is... I, Matthew McConaughey, honestly, I don't know what the hell happened to Matthew McConaughey <laughs> yeah, in the well, last, like, three years that just all of a sudden, you know, a yeah, snap, a light went a, off in his head where he just starts putting out this absolutely amazing work. Yeah, it's a <laughs> really quick turnaround. Like, you don't see it. Like, we've all seen people rise and fall with uh, in Hollywood, like, you know, redeem themselves. Robert Downey Jr. is an excellent example. And, um... But Matthew McConaughey has done it, like, really quickly. The last, like, three move three years have been, like, some of his best work. And, yeah, what did, like, I don't know. I'm well, a, and don't get, me, don't get me wrong either. Like, he's done some good work in the past. Yeah, see, I'm a, I'm a big fan of when uh, his role in Frailty. I mean, it's not the best, mm, uh, mm -hmm. like, kind of horror suspense movie ever, but I thought it was pretty good, especially considering Bill Paxton directed it, you know. Mm -hmm. He did a great job. I thought Matthew McConaughey had uh, uh, turned out a fantastic performance in that. And in this, it's just, I know... I think he's, uh, you know, just a completely different uh, actor, it seems, than yeah, what, he, what, what he was in his, I don't know how old he is now, but I would say, like, the when he was in his, you know, late 20s, mm -hmm. it seems like he's uh, just a like, completely different yeah, he's, compared to when he was doing stuff like Sahara. Sahara, you know, yeah. Shit, pieces of shit that, you know, nobody should be should be taking yeah no one should be proud of yeah but yeah i don't know i was surprised but good on him you know he did mm -hmm. a, he did a fantastic job it's a very short cameo he's only yeah. in about what 15 12 15 minutes yeah i was gonna yeah again spoiler alert but uh the trailer leads on that he might be a bigger character mm -hmm. than he is but he's only in it for about 15 maybe 15 to 20 minutes total but he does captivate you while he's but there. that he yeah he that. owns that 15 yeah. 20 minutes that conversation between Even leo, against leo. Huh. yeah against leo against a young innocent to be corrupted leo dicaprio the his first day of wall street goes out to to lunch with mcconaughey and just yeah it's where he's uh introduced to what the world of st stock trading is actually like yeah. if you're wondering yes matthew mcconaughey is the one that corrupts him into it mm-hmm and he does it in a really convincing performance. <laughs>
I would love to see. I don't think it'll happen because it would be ridiculous. But if he gets like a best supporting actor nomination for that yeah. ten minutes, I mean, oh, that, it, Jonah Hill has to have it. I think Jonah Hill will and be nominated, yeah, and, and I, I really just nominated. I, he has. I to think have he'll win. win. I don't see who else is even competition mm-hmm. for him in this. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I can't stress any further how much I think he is elevated himself as mm-hmm. an actor in this film compared to anything he's ever done. Oh, I know. It's incredible. Like, uh, like I've said, even in Superbad, he did a really convincing role as oh, a yeah. uh, horny high school kid. But in this, like, you believe he is this this mm-hmm. dude who just walked up to Leo and just like, is that your fucking car, dude? How do I get a car like that from me? And Leo's just like, well, I can show you, I guess. He's like, done. I work for you now. <laughs> And, yeah, he just follows Leo down the rabbit hole of this uh, life of excess and, like, incredible drug use. <laughs> oh, just a, a, an immense amount of drug use. Mm. I've seen a lot of movies with obscene. a lot of... <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of movies with a lot of drug use, but um, this is up there, man. There is a lot of drug use in this movie. Don't get me wrong, I love my drugs. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, not that I do them. <laughs> of course. But, uh... You know, I mean, like I kind of wanted pre- to I'm after this. Sure, movie. Oh god, yeah! I'm pretty sure me back then doing this, I'm pretty sure I would have died after my first week in the stock oh, yeah. market. I don't know. I don't know if I would have been able to handle it. I will hand it to the real Jordan Belfort. You, you were able to do that for multiple years and not die. Congrats, bro! His liver must be the size of a nickel. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Yeah, there's a scene in this where he claims he does enough drugs to like sedate Manhattan, uh, like three of the five boroughs of New York. Manhattan, Long Island, and Queens for a month. Yeah, for a month. And that's just what he did. He took quaaludes for back pain. He, you know, he took smoked weed to mellow him out, cocaine to wake me back up. Yeah, he said he, he did uh, quaaludes 10 to 15 times for a day for back pain. Mm-hmm. He would do... Uh, Cocaine, yeah, to wake him up after smoking weed to mellow him out. Yeah, and, and morphine, then, yeah, because and then, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, morphine. Yeah, and he does a lot of a lot of cocaine. It's similar to Flight that uh, cocaine is like, it's his, It's literally cocaine to uh, DiCaprio's character is spinach to Popeye in this movie. Literally. <laughs> and i got to hand it to him. I've definitely never heard of somebody actually blowing cocaine into a hooker's ass just to snort it out or whatever he's planning to do. I, yeah, that's an interesting scene. Again, you know, it's not. It's right at the beginning, but how you're introduced to his life of debauchery, he's, uh, he might he might be doing some coke out of a hooker's ass. I don't know. <laughs> that's kind of what it looked like. Yeah, um, was it hookers five to six times a week? Yeah, five yeah. to six times a week. There's a lot of nudity in this movie. A lot of nudity and a lot of drug use. These are some of my favorite things. So, I'll hand it to Scorsese. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I gotta say that there's no way that Scorsese was sitting there shooting scenes with Margot Robbie mm-hmm. fully fully nude oh, yeah. and wasn't just salivating. Oh, how the entire set. My God. The entire, yeah, the camera guy, the uh, microphone dude is just, oh my god, it's a pretty lady. For a first time, you know, kind of, I would consider this being the largest film for her career, for sure. Oh, easily, easily. For a first time sort of actress in that sort of spotlight, oh wow. Mm. I mean, it's, not, yeah. only does she, not only does she look gorgeous, she owns this her role in this film so well that it probably puts the majority of female actresses who have worked with Scorsese to shame. Mm -hmm. And there's been some good ones over the years, but like... Sharon Stone was easily one of the best in Casino. She did a fantastic role. This puts this... Yeah, this Throws her under the table. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, she's a lot less, you know... I didn't like Sharon Stone in Casino because she's a bad person. But uh, his wife in this film is, you know, mostly just exactly... She is literally the trophy wife. She, uh... He saw her. She was beautiful. In the words of, uh... It might have been Ethan Ethan Soupley's little character there, um, but when this girl is introduced on screen, the quote is, "I would fuck her if she was my sister," <laughs> and then another guy says, "I would let her give me AIDS." That's the kind of the uh, that's the kind of actress we're dealing with, people. <laughs> and me, I would do it if both were true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's she's a damn pretty lady, and uh, the fact that she can act on top of that, not that I would. You know, think Scorsese mm-hmm. would would pick a, a just a pretty face. You know, Michael Bay style. No, he's not the type to do that. No, usually. he's not the type to do that. But uh, the fact that he found both a pretty face and high caliber actress, you know, hats off to you. Scorsese just he works as actors like no one I've ever seen, man. Like, well, and even Kyle Chandler, I thought did uh, a pretty uh, decent he's decent the, job. Uh, he's the agent. Yeah, yeah, he's the yeah. agent. He did a pretty decent job. One of the, I haven't really seen too much of his work. I've seen him sort of in uh, 
He was in Friday Night Lights. Mm-hmm. The There's something show. else that uh, his face rings a bell, and I don't know what it is, though. Yeah, I think what? I've seen him as a small bit in something, but I can't think of what it might have been. What are his last couple movies? Uh, he was in... Um, oh, he was in Argo. Okay, yeah, that's where I saw him. Definitely. So that's pretty good. So clearly his career's taken a turn in the right direction. Mm-hmm. I think so, too. Like, I think... Because... Uh, I love the way Scorsese does this. This is another, like, even though it's a Jonah Hill and DiCaprio movie, it's, you know, there's a whole ensemble of people behind him. And there's not as, just as, like, in every other Scorsese movie of his, you know, actual legacy films, Mm -hmm. there's, he somehow has this knack for having every single extra be perfect. Mm -hmm. Every extra, every featured extra is just phenomenal nobody seems to blow their role nobody seems to you know make yep. it obvious yeah as they do in so many films i know he just has this knack for controlling the set in some way that i don't get uh his people management skills are incredible like they must be like i don't know i don't know because um is it rob reiner that plays his dad yeah, rob yeah. Reiner. yeah that's an interesting role like he doesn't act very much but uh there you go he comes in and he does a good job john favreau had a small part of all people john favreau director of iron man What's he doing in a Scorsese flick? I don't know, but I didn't mind him being there. Well, funny to note, too, is that for the majority of the last, I don't know, probably like five or six years, like the only roles that seems uh, Rob Reiner does, Mm -hmm. he does play a father, almost always. Oh, yeah. On the show New Girl, he ended up playing um, the main character's character's, uh, father, Jess's father. Yeah, Jess's father, yeah. I couldn't think of her name for a second there. Mm. Zoe Deschanel. That's one show where I just honestly, I care so much more about the other characters than I even care about the main one. Like, I'd rather watch a show with just them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, I started watching that show because of uh, Zoe Dashnell. I think she's a babe, but I continued watching it because the other characters like Schmidt are hilarious. But this isn't a podcast about New Girl. <laughs> I just I enjoy that show. Oh, we do that. Yeah, well, well a little bit of fuckery here. Not gonna lie, but um, <laughs> yeah, we're we're talking Wolf of Wall Street. Um, I will ask, what did you think about the length of it? Did it feel like three hours? Because this is. <coughs> You know Fun what? fact, this is Scorsese's longest film to date by about one minute or so. It's like about one minute longer than Casino. It didn't feel it didn't feel very long to me until I think about maybe the last 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Maybe, like, I, I honestly, I no matter what, it may be long. People may say it's too long, whatever. I would not change it for anything. I wouldn't shorten it, even if you could. Yeah, I, I just, there's, there's something about it. Where, I don't know, the end leaves you wanting a little more where it's kind of just a little dull or maybe it's just a little stretched out. Mm-hmm. But for the good three quarters of the movie, you there's, you don't even notice time. Like, no, exactly. This is one that's, of those films yeah. that just immerses you into it right away. Yeah, and that's a, what you need for a film of three hours because if you're going to make me sit there for three hours in the theater, like I don't want to mm-hmm. notice it at all. And I didn't, really. And somewhat to the last, the last little bit leaves a little bit to be desired. It's not quite as final as, you know, like Henry Hill shutting the door and suburbia and Goodfellas. But it is a, um, it's an interesting ending for sure. I had, afterwards, I was thinking about the uh, the morals and of, uh, well, the message, if you want to call it. I think this film is just, you know, meant to be enjoyed. And I don't, does not, doesn't necessarily have a message that's right up front, but this guy is a free man right now. Jordan Belfort, not in jail. After yep. all the shit he's did, he is currently a free man. And if you're a fan of something like Boiler Room, this is basically the absolute best version yeah. of Boiler Room you could possibly watch. I think this is the best film about uh, like Wall Street and the broker business ever. I, I, I honestly, originally when I first heard about the film, I, I wasn't... Uh, completely uh enthused about the mm-hmm. choice of martin scorsese doing something about the stock market mm-hmm. but he handles this subject matter so differently like yeah. obviously there's c- clearly cues to something like uh boiler room mm-hmm. it's, it's rather similar but on such an escalated level mm-hmm. just to show just how completely despicable low life people yeah. these people were that were involved in this sort of insider yeah he trading shows and stuff. Um, he shows greed in mm-hmm. its truest, rawest form in this film, and it's oh, like it's, yeah. it's greed with enthusiasm. It's greed with motivation. It's like greed who want like more. Like this film is about excess in all all its forms, <laughs> literally all its forms, and it's uh, it's spectacular. It did not feel like three hours to me, but it it was a fun ride for sure. Which and the funniest part about it being all about greed is the one point when he's wearing the suit and the guy says to him, uh, you look like fucking Gordon Gecko." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gordon. Greed is good. Mm-hmm. 
Um, one thing I loved, like you mentioned, um, you don't, you don't wish it was a minute shorter or you don't see mm -hmm. how it could be a minute shorter. Um, I think about how much extra footage there was from all these impromptu, like, uh, improv scenes and shit that oh, must've been in there. Yeah. Oh, I can't imagine what was on the cutting room floor. This could have been a four hour movie, I'm sure. But I, yeah, even though it is three hours, there's nothing I would, nothing I, you know, as a half-ass movie fan would be like, okay, that this can go. And there's like random one-off conversations about, you know, almost nothing at, at right. times. Yeah. There's a, it, um, a lot of that scenes. Adds, that adds the sort of, uh, it adds kind of atmosphere. Fulty, like just yeah. kind of a quippy sort of humor that mm -hmm. it, it needs. That, yeah, a story like this needs. And that, that's a point I was going to mention, but I got off topic. Uh, it is a, it's a complicated subject matter, but like insider trading, stock market, all that kind of shit, numbers, you know, real mustard shit, as McConaughey calls it. It's a complicated, like, how he made all his millions is probably a complicated process, but Scorsese just handles that in such a smart way. He's like, you know what? It doesn't matter how he did it. He fucking did it. <laughs> like, this is the result of it. Like, he doesn't waste too many times on, sorry, doesn't waste too much time on uh, specifics and technical stuff. Well, it's like he says at the beginning of the movie when uh, Jordan Belfort goes to lunch. Jordan Belfort is, of course, Leonardo DiCaprio's character, goes to lunch with Mark Hanna, who's uh, played by Matthew McConaughey. Mm -hmm. And jo uh, Jordan Belfort says to the waiter, oh, I'm good with water for now. Mark, H Mark Hanna says, uh, it's his first day on Wall Street. Give him time. Yeah, give him time. Give him time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah. thought that was priceless. I thought that was cool, too. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, that's the start of his... Uh... <laughs> And then there's, of course, the stress relief. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, how many times do you uh, jerk off that conversation? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, McConaughey plays a hilarious, hilarious character in his little 15 minutes there. But, um, yeah, that's literally his explanation. Like, because DiCaprio asks, again, you know, many spoilers here. <laughs> DiCaprio asks, like, how do you do this job on drugs? Like, how do you just do drugs and function? What quote is that? Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to stay relaxed. You jerk off? Ah, uh, yeah, like three, four times a week, maybe? Those are rookie numbers. You got to pump those up <laughs> twice a day. Yeah, McConaughey literally says he strokes it to thinking about money. Ah, oh, such a funny scene. Well, it's funny, too, like with the whole thing about greed. Even when you're first introduced to uh, Jonah Hill's character, Leonardo DiCaprio, I believe, sitting at a diner. Mm -hmm. uh, his car's parked outside. Jonah Hill's character, Donnie Azoff, just walks up to him. Says to him, how much money you make? And he says to him, uh, US 30, uh, he's like, uh, $70,000 last month. And Donnie Azov says to him, get the fuck out of here. And he's like, well, technically 72. So he tells him to show him a pay stub. He says, I'll quit my job right now, work for you. And then he does. <laughs> and he actually fucking did it. That's one of the greatest moments I've ever seen in a movie. Mm -hmm. That's like one of those really memorable moments that I think will be talked about from like, it'll be up there with the, uh, do you think I'm funny scene yeah, from, no, exactly. from Goodfellas yeah. and shit? It'll be like, yeah, that hilarious diner scene. There's another cup. There's a couple scenes that are like at the caliber of the, uh, you think I'm funny scene with Joe Pesci and, uh, and what's his face? Um, well, I think Henry this is Hill's probably character. one of his most memorable films. He's mm -hmm. somehow just reached down into that bag of tricks and pulled out a brand new, sort of map that he can, you know, kind of put out whenever he wants. If he puts out more films like this with Leo and even Jonah Hill, it'll be insane the amount mm. of, of years he'll still put in his career. I, yeah, it's insane how many hits he'll have, like mm -hmm. pound for pound. I mean, he is my favorite director of all time, but that's like a personal thing. But by the end of his career, he might wind up like pound for pound, like for being going down in history as one of the greatest ever. Along with, you know, your... Martin, the film king, Scorsese. Yeah, yeah it'll, he'll go down with Hitchcock and, you know, all those guys for sure. But oh, that's, the, that's the thing. He's might have made his most controversial film, and this is a man who did Casino and, mm -hmm. you know, Goodfellas and all these crazy films. This might be his most controversial film, and he's 71, I believe, right now. Like, he is, he is now, an old man. Do you think man. it's most controversial because technically the sort of, you know, anti-hero of the film, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, is not is never exactly vindicated, like never actually has any punitive measures taken towards him besides just, you know, having sort of his assets frozen for a while or whatever happened. He went to jail for, I believe it was three years. Yeah, he got off relatively scot-free, all things considered. But yeah, that's like, I mean, like we, I mentioned earlier, Henry Hill is kind of a despicable character. You could argue that uh, Sam Rothstein, that's his name I remembered from Casino, 
is uh, he's a bit of a he's a better guy, but he's not an honest man. He's an honest con man, if anything. But Jordan Belfort, Leo DiCaprio's character, is probably the most despicable. Like he's out for himself a hundred percent this entire film. Well, not to mention something too to also note. As opposed to if you're comparing it with Goodfellas and Casino. Mm. Yeah, I keep honestly, making that comparison, but it's would, a bit of a different film. Well, no, if you were to do a list, if you were to do a box set, basically, mm -hmm. of Martin Scorsese movies that no film fan should be without, mm -hmm. it would have Mean Streets, yeah. Goodfellas, mm -hmm. Casino, and The Wolf of Wall Street. And The Wolf of Wall Street, yeah. I would argue The Departed should be in there, too. Perhaps Raging Bull. I don't know, but that's like... See, to me, that would be yeah. a separate box set. Mm -hmm. I'm talking films of the same sort of... I, yeah, to me, both. he has two film styles. Like, and to me, because I think The Aviator's great. I would put yeah. Raging Bull in a box set with The Aviator. Okay, yeah, no, I see where you're you know going with that. Yeah, he does. He has his, um, his, his like, biopic, mm -hmm. if you will. His version of a biopic is telling a story, an amazing story centered on one person usually that's the way he does and mostly centered on the more despicable side of that person yeah he tells um he tells tales of uh you know you know not so honest men <laughs> like you know men of violence men of greed and oh my my cat is <laughs> technical difficulties the cat is making crazy noises oh y'all good buddy oh sorry guys my cat just <laughs> almost died no big deal uh, what was that i don't i don't know i can't get it out Jesus Christ. I don't know if I'm going to edit that out or not. I might yeah, just fun, leave it in. Fun with animals. <laughs> fun with animals. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I lost our talking point. Yeah, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck we were talking about. Um, yeah, why don't we use this moment to take a small commercial break. This episode of Random Movie Talk is brought to you by Quaaludes. Quaaludes, if you want to skip the drool phase and go straight to cerebral palsy, try Quaaludes. Brought to you in part by Big Nasty Productions. All right, guys, we're back after our short, extended commercial break. Um, yeah, we had to step outside for a moment. I'm sorry. But we're back to finish up and talk a little bit more about uh, The Wolf of Wall Street. I have no idea where we were because my memory serves me incorrectly. However, I'm down to talk about it some more because it's an amazing film. Yeah. Where do, you wanna, where do you want to kick off part two? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I honestly can't remember either where, where we were at, but... Uh Basically, I could rant for another probable, probably an hour about this film, but we'll see how far we get. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if uh, we talked about basically like the uh, actual, you know, intricacies of the plot and like how, you know, he does go up and down. Mm -hmm. But honestly, he seems to. It almost seems to me like as if he does try and start out. He does try and be a good guy. He even says to Matthew McConaughey's character, "But if I make money and the other guy makes money, isn't that advantageous?" Yeah, isn't for both that of the us? Because that's what a stockbroker's technic that's what their job technically is, technically, is to make yeah. both of you money. But we mainly, all know that's not what they're fucking doing. No, of course not. But um, yeah, he does have honest intentions at the very, very mm -hmm. beginning. But he did, he, that goes right out the window. There's not much of a transition there. But as soon as he saw like the money, the dollar signs, that was it for him. He's it's like, almost more like when he sees that girl than when he sees the woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's because as soon as he see, as soon as he leaves his wife, or well, not even leaves his wife, but as soon as he starts trying to bang her or starts banging her, it's it's like that transition of his or that uh, just complete character switch just kind of goes right out. Mm -hmm. He oh, starts yeah. wearing the nice suits and you know what I mean all that. Oh yeah, he. Um, he starts living the life of absolute excess because yeah he he hits a few lows right at the beginning of this film um october 19th 87 i believe it was yeah. the uh black monday. black monday where the stock market crashed and it literally just shut down i don't i'm not too familiar with the event but yeah it was bad times and that was i guess his first day on the job <laughs> so that would be a major setback for anybody but this guy no uh, I watched an interview with the real Jordan Belfort the other day, and he said uh, he he was attending actual um, dentist college or something like that before he became a stockbroker. Hmm. And um, during the first day of class, the uh, the professor said he's like, "Well, this is an honest living. Like, it's good to help people as a you know a dentist or whatever. But if you're looking to get rich, this probably isn't the industry for you." And he got up and walked out on this first day of dentistry college. Well, you know, and everybody can really and never I'm sure came everybody back. Everybody wants to make money. <laughs> It's well, just, there, that's a there love, was that line. Yeah, where, that's where like, do you put that line that you won't cross before you try and make money? Yeah, that's it? a great conversation early in the film when he's just like, everybody wants to make money. Mm -hmm. Am I crazy or does everyone want to get rich? Yes, to a certain extent, everyone wants to get rich. 
But yeah, it's a really funny conversation. Not monks, man. They got cloths wrapped around me. <laughs> They're not buying shit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he he creates like because it's all made up. I guess the money is like you know invisible, and sometimes it doesn't really explain how exactly it works. But it's like he's counting cards. Like he just ha- he has a he's basically cheating the system of stockbroking. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's <laughs> this is oh, quality oh, radio right here. Oh, this cat. <laughs> well, I don't have a camera on. This is fucking. <laughs> Imagine if we had a camera on. God damn. Uh, Anyways, Wolf of Wall Street. I'm sorry, my cat's weird. She's hanging out here. She she likes to be a part of the conversation. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> but yes, the greed, the greed. Everyone has greed in them, and I think that's what makes his character somewhat sympathetic, for the most part. Like. I would say, given his set of skills and his position, I might do something similar to him. Maybe with less cocaine and hookers? I don't know. I mean, then again, I've never been in that position. So I would agree. Oh, there we go. I would, agree. I, would, <laughs> I would agree. I would think that, I honestly think that the majority of people who if were given that set of skills with that sort of you know unique opportunities into mm-hmm. that field of work, I think anybody, well, not anybody, but the majority of people would take advantage of the power they basically just held in their hands oh yeah with this invisible sort of currency yeah that as matthew mcconaughey is just fairy dust yeah it's just fairy dust it doesn't exist it's like bitcoins anyone out there in internet land will know what i'm talking about about bitcoins it's a fucking made-up currency that has actual value i don't understand how it works it's beyond me but yeah it's it's all fairy dust and yes given the circumstances i would probably try to get myself rich because that's the his bottom line is to get himself rich and to help those around him get rich because he is actual that's something they emphasize like he is a leader figure in his firm like he started this firm and he raised an army of brokers and it like some of the his speeches are literally like a sick version of a general giving his 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 legions a speech only instead of slaughtering whatever other culture, they're they're robbing people blind. It's like an army of thieves. Well, and if my memory serves me correctly, awesome. the only the only one offense real like the real offense that he actually gets arrested for is when he uh, I believe it's insider trading. Kind yeah, of. but only because of the Steve Martin deal, correct? Or yeah, Steve Madden. Sorry. Steve Madden. Steve Ma- yeah, Steve Martin. Hey, he made a, Steve Martin did. made a comedy deal. Yeah, but, uh, you know, that'd be a good deal. I'd take the Steve deal. the Steve Mann deal. I mean, I'm pretty sure if that that's the only thing he actually seems to have ended up getting. I think that's what of, brought them all yeah. down at the end. Even though there was many other offenses, like you know, well, drive- the other the other offenses are the ones that are more drastic. Oh yeah, like driving under the influence, like not just a little, not just three four beers under the influence, like driving when you're fucking interplanetary. Was it four lemons? Yeah, four of these the mythical lemon. Mm-hmm. Like I don't. I'm curious. We got to find someone who's done quaaludes and just ask them about quaaludes. Yeah, there's um, bring them back. You, yeah, you want to talk about quaaludes specifically because they were like a highlight of this film. I think. That I is, think we should talk about quaaludes. You know what? I, honestly, I think in every movie I've ever seen, like I mean, Wonderland, they talk about quaaludes, and it's made me want to do quaaludes. Mm-hmm. In pretty much any movie that's based in basically the late '70s, early '80s, they talk about quaaludes. Yeah. I always say, you know, I wish those things were around because I wanted to try them. Mm-hmm. But this this movie does something that no other movie has ever done. It makes you want to create them yourself. <laughs> yeah. it, it makes you willing to go that far. Oh yeah, because they 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 don't glamorize it at oh. times. They make you go interplanetary. They um. But it looks like so much fun. Well, yeah, yes and no. <laughs> the cerebral palsy phase, I could probably do with it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He does a lot of drugs, but quaaludes are like the highlight of like that's his drug of choice, and it's um it's an odd choice. Like you hear. You don't you don't hear about them because they're just simply not available anymore. They've been well, his drug of choice is money. Remember? Oh yes, of course. Yeah. But with money, you can get whatever you want. But yeah, he becomes a ruthless drug addict at at times during this film. Like, uh, like it is an awesome monologue at the beginning where he's talking about all the drugs he does, and then he ta- snorts the cocaine with a bill, talking about how this is his favorite and it'll make you invincible, mm-hmm. and how enough of it can. Have you make you uh, just destroy any enemy, yeah. vanquish any enemy in your way? And Again, he's like, and I'm uh, not talking about this. I'm talking about this. Breaks out the bill. The hundred and just throws it out. Well, as he, what does he call them when the uh, the cops show up on his boat? They're fun coupons. Yeah, fun. Hundred dollar bills yeah. are fun coupons, and you're just fucking making it rain. Uh yeah. The, I um, wish I had some more fun coupons in my fucking wallet. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I, I don't make it rain like he does though. 
but uh, I will enjoy it on screen, that's for sure. Because mm-hmm. um, that's why I love movies like this, and that's why I love video games and like just media in general. It's fun to experience these weird debaucherous tales through film, isn't it? Like it was, it yeah, was, I, it was quite enjoyable. It was really fun mm-hmm. to watch Jordan Belfort, or yeah, that's his name, right? Jordan. Yeah, Jordan Belfort. To watch him in a plane full of fifty hookers like that's just that's madness. Yeah, and I can only imagine that's what never going to happen. Like that is, you got you got fifty hookers in a in a stream jet uh, liner just for yourself, mm-hmm. and then you got fifty more waiting for you when you touch down. Yeah, that's his bachelor party, by the way, is what we're talking about. A two million dollar bachelor party, which I don't like. I mean, I, I like oh, even if you're making money hand over fist, I don't understand how how you could possibly live this lavishly. Oh like, yeah, that's just, I, just honestly, just like that would be. I mean, I've never. I'd be, I'd be dead in a week. Oh yeah, for sure. Like it's. I I don't know. Like drug drugs are a sensitive topic for some, I guess. But I don't know how you do that. Like day in day out, I don't know how to be how you function like that it's um and to like excel on it too like this is just the lifestyle he wanted and he 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 did it he did it hard (laughs) (laughs) uh yeah um well it didn't didn't really make me want to try any of the other drugs but quaaludes were interesting um how much he just loved them like so much so that uh, he made uh, Jonah Hill's character risk his life during a boat crash scene yeah, just to, get, to save them. just to get mm-hmm. one last one. And his quote is like, "I'm not dying sober. I'm just not doing that." So there is there is the bad side of drugs. It does show that, but I don't know. This he gets off scot free. Well, not to mention, I mean, he does get clean it by the end of the film. He is is clean and sober at the mm-hmm. end. Yeah, they bust him for other things. Yeah, and I mean, you know, I guess. Uh, getting jail time and having to face the consequences mm-hmm. somewhat of your actions will yeah. make anybody kind of question their uh, methods and morals but yeah it's a start for sure but yeah it was right after the uh, the boat crash scene that is like the plane that was sent to pick him up crashed as well and i don't think he actually saw it in real life but i think that was just to illustrate a point like you know when he says the seagull yeah, yeah, it's like that. Uh, my fucking boat crashed, and the plane that was sent to pick me up crashed. Like, you know, I shouldn't be alive anymore. And I think that's around the time he tried to sober up, but it was already, he was already too far down the greed hole to, to remain unscathed. What'd you think about the scene where he uh, hits his wife? Oh, at the uh, the ending one yeah. after the um, that was an uncomfortable scene. I think even the the sex they had right there. I mean, there's multiple sex scenes in this movie, but that one was there was nothing sexy about that. She just like fuck me like it's the last time ever. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be like that doesn't sound good. No, this is gonna. I would sorry, folks, but I'm I'm not gonna be interested if a girl says that to me. Be like, hmm, you got some explaining to do. But, um, I don't know. That was a really uncomfortable scene, like what happened afterwards, too, with the uh, the taking of the, the kid and mm-hmm. backing the car out of the... Yeah, I don't know. Any scene like that is always, like... like uh, I would compare it to in Breaking Bad when they they fight and when Walt takes the uh, the daughter, whatever her name is. You're just like, yeah, it's you, really similar, I guess. Yeah, so. you don't want to... Seeing domestic violence like that is just fucking ugly in my opinion but, but now that you brought that up let me ask you that question then do you think vince gilligan handled it better than martin scorsese or do you think martin scorsese handles that that kind of a topic better than a vince gilligan for instance um well i i would say scorsese handles it better because of just like his legacy overall i mean it was handled pretty well in breaking bad like it wasn't too because if scenes like that are too violent and like you've seen over the top horror movies where it's just like awful violence for no reason mm-hmm. it's not yeah. always my cup of tea like um depends on my mood but yeah just like kicking the shit out of a woman and not down but scorsese <laughs> yeah surprise it's, it's not okay to hit women believe it or not uh yeah Scors- so <laughs> scorsese handles it well because he i mean he did it back in raging bull a little bit mm-hmm. too and um obviously and, and, and kind of all and, of his movies in a, in a way <laughs> now that i'm thinking about it but did that's like yeah that's part of any you know any great man's downfall is when his you know the love of his life or his trophy wife whatever you want to call it that's just one more thing to lose and that's yeah it happens like even the uh, the most loyal woman is not going to stick through that kind of shit like mm-hmm. he was pushing it for sure but 
she was I think she was a good girlfriend all along like she had a I believe they had a gentleman's agreement you're gross <laughs> <laughs> my cat is so fucking gross yeah, she seems she seems to almost like kind of know the goings on, but just yeah, kind of it un- under the rug for yeah, the majority of the time. It's one until, of those unspoken until he says Venice's name. But that's the that's the thing there too. Is did did she know the whole time or not? Because when he's he, uh, and, I doubt and she had alert, the idea she, of the scale. <laughs> yeah, well, again, well, he uh, yells out this girl Venice, uh, Venice, her name in bed, and Venice is an S and M uh, dominatrix who had him tied up with a candle in his ass mm. and then started pouring the wax on him who he uh and uh quote what was it what did he call her a dirty birdie <laughs> 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 oh I, I was laughing so hard at that scene because yeah there would be one up one off scenes like that and it'll be right back to dicaprio on the main stage it's so good yeah <laughs> but um yeah what did he say his, his safe word was wolfie yeah wolfie and mm-hmm. she just didn't give a shit yeah. Oh, well, that's another thing. As much nudity as there is for any ladies out there, you see some DiCaprio bum quite often. But if for any guys out there, there's like a hundred sets of boobs, so you're covered. And then for any of our homosexual friends. Oh yeah, there's, there's even a scene in for uh, for the gay community as well. There's a there's a scene there for you of uh, I don't know. I'd say what, what do you say? Probably thirty person, thirty man strong. I'd say that was a, mm-hmm. roughly a twenty man, 20 orgy. Man, you know, twenty man, twenty man strong orgy, just yeah. all naked dudes. Mm-hmm. I, I was, yeah. I guess that's good segue into a, that's a great scene, by the way. The twenty man orgy, ah, that's cinema, cinematic gold. This is probably Scorsese's funniest movie ever. I think. Like I was personally laughing. Oh, yeah. out, I was yeah. laughing out loud the most. Well, how, they handle, how they handle the, the homosexual topic in it is, is absolutely hilarious. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. love how when they when they confront him and start acting like a you know the mafioso types that are yeah, so familiar yeah. to Scorsese's films. Yeah, that the was the makes one reference to Jonah Hill being at the game. Yeah, club. yeah. I, I, that's this. I was waiting for that scene. I'm like, oh, here we go. Scorsese's going to probably kill someone in this scene. But you know, it's funny. I honestly was sitting there the second when they were questioning him. I, I anticipated that. I was figuring he's going. I say somebody that was one of these guys was at the gay bar. <laughs> yeah, one of these guys yeah. was there. He knows them. Yeah, well, that's one thing they play up about Jonah Hill's character is these uh, these rumors that may or may not be true. Like the very first long winded conversation they have is just like, I heard to Jonah Hill's character, I heard you uh, heard you married your cousin there, and just instantly he's like, yeah, well, yeah, I married my cousin. I'm not gonna let somebody else fuck my cousin if she grew up hot, you know. But he does it with this straight face, so you don't know. He's an he's an odd character. There's definitely some. Uh, Leonardo says to him, "Is she uh, like your you know, your second, your third cousin, or something like that?" Oh no, no, she's she's my my uh, my mother's uh, brother's kid. Or yeah, something like yeah, that. <laughs> something like that. Oh man, he plays that scene like just ice cold. It's hilarious. Um, yeah, scenes like that just lead that Jonah Hill's character might be <laughs> l- even crazier than his on-screen. What does he says to him? He says, "Aren't you wor- aren't you worried about them?" Uh, coming out retarded or something yeah yeah. he's like oh well if they if they came out retarded you know we just put them in the car drive them out to a field (laughs) somewhere and you kind of kind of let them run free yeah oh man it's a it's a funny scene and you can't tell if he's being serious or not even (laughs) then the scene ends before he even says if he's serious (laughs) or not it just leads it up to your imagination it's a he does some really funny scenes just like yeah aren't you worried about your kids coming out with like birth defects oh no we have two kids they're they're fine (laughs) like no we're good Oh, yeah. Jonah Hill's character is great. I hope he gets Best Supporting Actor. And if Leo can get Best Actor, not that Oscars mean fucking anything, but... No, not really. I agree that they... uh, Leo deserves one for sure, and I think Jonah should probably get one as well. I can't think of anything else recently that's a better performance by either. Well, I think that's the strongest thing about this film is the fact that as soon as you see it, it seems like you can't remember anything else that came out this year. Mm-hmm. That's like yeah. nothing else stands out beyond yeah. this. That's what happens to me every time Chris says he releases mm-hmm. a movie. Uh, Hugo, as much I do like Hugo, but it was an exception. It wasn't like I'm I wasn't running out of my door to see Hugo like I did this. But uh, like every The Departed was great. I don't know how you feel about The Departed. I love The Departed. Yeah, it's a very good film. I loved that movie. Uh, Gangs of New York, even before that, like he has a reputation for amazingness, and I'm I'm worried that. We're only going to get, like, one or two more out of his out of Scorsese before it's just, like, you know, the <laughs> the human condition catches up with him, you know? Yeah, and I honestly, I think that 
I think we're so with The Departed. I think The Departed is just a little bit less than something like this or Casino or mm-hmm. Goodfellas just because of the fact that it's already based it's based on, you know, the Japanese film, uh, Infernal Affairs. Yeah, yeah. Infernal but, um, Affairs. you know, it's don't get me wrong, it's still a great film. I felt like everybody still did a great performance. I had great performances in it, even Matt Damon, and uh, I thought Jack Nicholson was great. But this is just Mark so, Wahlberg, too. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg, too, and Alec Baldwin, even. Mm-hmm. But this was, like, just such a step above. Like, I even, I honestly think this was a step above Casino's, uh, Casino and maybe even Goodfellas. Like Leo, For, yeah, speak. I will say, speaking purely on the main character and not yeah. the movie itself, when we're just talking about Henry Hill or Sam Rothstein or Jordan Belfort, Jordan's my favorite. Like, he is charismatic as fuck. Like, Leo DiCaprio sells this role big time. I think that's the biggest guy, the biggest caliber of actor he's had as mm. his main guy. I think so, too. And DiCaprio, like, if it's not, if it wasn't known before, it's got to be known after this. Like, he's one of the best that is currently alive, I think. You know, everyone has their favorites, but it's obvious, like, you got your Daniel Day-Lewis and all these method actors, but DiCaprio, man. He's one of those guys that he he doesn't have to, you know, I'll put it, I'll say, I'll put it this way. I fucking hate George Clooney. Okay. I understand the appeal. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I personally don't like it, so I should reword that. I don't fucking hate George Clooney. He seems like a really nice guy. He seems like a <laughs> I was gen- gonna say he like, seems like a real genuine guy. I like that him better in person yeah. than I do in his. I films. apologize. <laughs> I hate George Clooney films. I don't care. You could have the greatest written script, the greatest director. I will still not like it if George Clooney is a star. I do not like him as an actor. Okay, I think that's fair. George yeah. Clooney. I feel like George Clooney plays George Clooney in every film. Anyone who he does, does not but I believe like George Clooney. Me, <laughs> anyone who does not believe me, I dare you to do this. Go ahead and pick up a copy of Batman and Robin. Oh, yeah. Now take the video off of Batman and Robin. Just play the audio. Pick up any other George Clooney movie. Throw that in. This would be a fun experience. Listen to just the audio. Hmm. Tell me that he is not speaking in the same speech pattern in every movie he's ever been in. He actually has less range, in my opinion, than Nicolas Cage. Yeah, he does. I will say statement. he's limited on his range, and he always gets. I don't know. I how. don't understand how he's considered a top tier actor. To me, someone like Leonardo DiCaprio is a top tier actor. Oh yeah, I he's was someone just someone who yeah, <laughs> is there. He's that face that you recognize. Yeah, he yeah. does a similar style. Like Jordan Belfort is like a dirty Gatsby. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, he is a dirty Gatsby. <laughs> but, uh, but the great Gatsby he, he cocaine such, edition. He has such a level of difference between his characters. Look at Basketball Diaries. Look at even, you know, it's not the greatest movie, but uh, even if you look at something like Body of Lies. I like Body of Lies. It's not amazing, but I enjoyed it. Like in Blood Diamond? Blood like Diamond Diamond. I enjoyed. I think it was that was a very good performance. Aviator is an amazing performance. The Aviator he turned he turned an amazing performance. I don't know I thought he would have gotten a, a best actor for that personally. Oh yeah, but. like his he's getting more and more range. Like he's not quite obviously he's not Daniel Day Lewis. You can slap prosthetics on him and he can play anything. See, but that's the thing I consider him, but I think for his mm -hmm. like playing men of his Mm -hmm. age bracket, you know, good looking, charming, handsome individual in his, in his early forties, late thirties. He's probably, he's the best alive right now. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I've followed his career since uh, Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Same here. Well, I heard of him. I got basketball diaries. Yeah. yeah. That's, Basketball Diaries is the first thing I remember seeing him in. And even Mark Wahlberg was fantastic in that. Yeah, I, and then I, I saw I'm What's man, Eating Gilbert Grape. I'm not a huge fan of not that Not a big movie, fan of that I think His performance is pretty it. solid, though. People thought he was, uh, you know, actually handicapped in that film, briefly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I honestly think Leonardo DiCaprio is like that. I think he's the Clark Gable of the 2000s, of the 1990s. That's an interesting the comparison, 2000s. yeah, Clark Gable. That's, I think that's Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, man, he's uh, he's really friggin' good, and I I want to see him in everything. Like I just put Leo DiCaprio in it. It's like uh, what Kevin Smith says about Ben Affleck. No, fuck that shit. Put DiCaprio in it if it's a it's a if it's a good role. I want to see him do it because uh, he's not an action star. He's he's just an actor, and that's all. He, he's a really fucking good actor. Yeah, I honestly feel like they, I don't think there are besides the the mainstays that are still around. Just as it's kind of off topic, but just as we're on the subject, sure. I don't think there is that many uh, seemingly uh, more method actors out there anymore, except for you know the ones that are still around, like your Daniel Day Lewis, yeah, or Gary yeah. Oldman. Um, yeah, I just I don't know. Method acting is it seems to be dangerous, like to like completely immerse yourself. You've there's obviously horror stories of uh, not really horror stories, but uh, Dan Daniel Day Lewis. 
<laughs> Daniel Day Lewis, sorry, is just uh, he's Abe Lincoln for the entire time he was filming Lincoln. Like you can't break that character. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, well, just like in Gangs of New York, he was Bill the Butcher, and mm-hmm. apparently, allegedly, he uh, almost got hypothermia because mm-hmm. he refused to wear a jacket because yep. they didn't have them. Yep. Like that kind of dedication is almost scary. <laughs> I don't know how he does, it. and I don't believe DiCaprio works that way. I'm not. I can't be positive, but I think I he, wouldn't believe so. I think he's just. He is just really skilled. He is mm-hmm. just a really skilled actor. That's why I compare him to more of like a Clark Gable, more of a Cary Grant even, where he's this kind of, you know, handsome guy that can play different characters that still sort of, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. brings that familiarity out in the character that, you you, you know, people who seen him in this and liked him in this will still go and see it. Yeah. But at the same time, he owns that character. He's he confident. Still he's... switch it up and own that. Whereas yeah, George is... Clooney, you're seeing George Clooney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's George Clooney playing George Clooney doing this george clooney playing george clooney doing this mm-hmm. it's like nicholas cage i feel like yeah, the same yeah. sort of thing nicholas I, cage gets ragged on a lot more because he's way over the top yeah but george does, clooney's one of the most actor. monotoned looks like he just phoned it in actors i've ever seen and again i have no problem with the person like <laughs> just to reiterate just the just well the yeah you're, it's almost a contradiction because you're like I, I like the guy himself but all he does is play himself in movies. Yeah, <laughs> like he's, yeah, just, yeah, he's, he's just George Clooney. Yeah, give me a up. George Clooney movie where George Clooney just you know rides around on a motorcycle and plays basketball. I'll watch that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, give me a day in the life of George Clooney. I'll watch. He that. just hangs out with buddies. Yeah, you know. yeah. I I, don't, I like Stacey Keebler. I like George Clooney, but he's I would put him on a. Leo is on a completely entire different tier, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good actors working today, and there's a lot of good actors in this film, but DiCaprio is just, like, it's it's crazy how enthused he gets in this role. Like, there's giant 15-minute monologues, maybe not 15 minutes, but longer monologues of him just chanting and, like, rooting up his, uh, um, his band of loyal <laughs> fucking degenerates. Like, he does it. There's a lot of good speeches in here. I, um... I look forward to the YouTube compilations that will be made. Well, honestly, like I'm no obviously no weird fanboy of DiCaprio speak, but I mean, the, I, if you look at his body of work, it's I mean, solid. The, yeah, the only things like I mean, Titanic made tons of money and it was a huge, huge hit. Mm-hmm. Some people may not like it, whatever well, and whatnot. Yeah, I remember back in the day when I uh, when he was first starting to like. The beach is my only my only option for not very good. Is yeah. the beach that would be I the only one yeah, I have, not I have too... a quarrel with. I haven't seen the beach in a really long time, but it's it wasn't my favorite either. Uh, Titanic was pretty good too, and I think that's what started off his like, because um, he was almost that like pretty boy mm. in right now mm. actor for a bit. Because uh, we've seen all tons of actors go through that. Channing Tatum, yeah, he was the Channing, teen star. Channing yeah. Tatum and you know Sir whatever the fucking Twilight fucks guy's name is. Um, oh, the werewolf. Yep. Yeah, sure, whatever. I don't know. I don't know what his name is. It Taylor does. something? Lautner. T- Taylor Lautner. Yeah, Taylor yeah, Elf. that's it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but you see those guys kind of go through rise and fall very, very quickly because they're uh, they're young stars. And DiCaprio kind of got ragged on when he was younger. He's like, oh, he was in Romeo and Juliet. And he's in Titanic, which at the time made like just ungodly amount of money. And it was, you know, it was parodied and everything. Like when movies get that big, they just tend to be made mm-hmm. fun of a little bit. Like Avatar, only Avatar was bad. Yeah. Mm. Titanic was pretty good. Um, but yeah, so he had this reputation of being that guy, but he just broke it, like, instantly. Like, in my eyes, anyways. Yeah, but he it, just sort of transitioned out of nowhere into this genuine threat, like a real actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's, and he's and quite good. And taking over the reins as the top dog, is my opinion. Mm. Well, fuck, Scorsese traded De Niro in for him. He traded in a Robert De Niro. Those are rare. I honestly would have been interested to see what like it, what someone like a Robert Downey Jr. could have done with. Uh, uh, I think Robert Jr. Downey Jr. I, I think could he's have a done. Close second yeah, Robert Downey books. could have done this role too. I think maybe not with quite as much enthusiasm, but I think he again he. I don't uh, think quite as much charm would have been there. I think because no, because Leonardo Robert DiCaprio's, Downey Jr. is fucking charming. But. Yeah, because, well, no, because <laughs> but, of Leonardo DiCaprio's slight kind of innocence that he has to him. He does have a slight you know, innocence. It kind of makes too. it just adds it that much more of like that burn when you find out mm-hmm. he's just this evil yeah. fuck. And when he's lying, you genuinely yeah. you genuinely believe him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's doing that believability for sure. He's doing monologues to like breaking the fourth wall, doing the monologue to the audience, and you're like, mm-hmm. well, he could be lying to me right now. <laughs> what's 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 uh, stopping him? Basically, he's. He's a lying bastard at times. Yeah, to me nowadays, those two would be the top top two. Philip Seymour Hoffman's another guy I think just is, is an incredible mm-hmm. performer. But Yeah, that's why I want, like, Scorsese's one of the few directors who can, like, pull off these just, like, massive acting talent orgies that he has going on where you can just summon all these great actors in it. 
because it rarely works out. But when that ha- when it happens and you have like big names, like multiple big names, oh, like yeah. uh, the Departed is a perfect example of like three or four like really solid huge guys in it. But they all like they're balanced really well. Scorsese is like there's no real star of my films. The story is the star. The characters are the stars. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm rambling. I love Scorsese. <laughs> <laughs> I could go on for for a long time. Oh, um, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, what else do you want to cover? What about the um, again on the on a cameo we didn't mention? Uh, what's the dude's name from the artist? The French French guy. Who, uh, who Jean, is the uh, uh, Jean? Uh, Jean. I can't. His actual his actual name is Jean. But I, I know. I know. I think I, it's like Drewy or something. Something like that. The, uh, the star of the artist, who which uh, won all. I feel bad because I can't remember his last name, or probably pronounce it even. But I can't either. I'm, I'm gonna look it up. But yeah, he was the star of the uh, the artist last. When was that? Two years ago. I think his cameo was pretty good too, as the uh, the sneaky Swedish banker or whatever he was. I loved when he was talking when he was speaking in English. I love that mm. you fucking American ass. <laughs> yeah, that was really weird. Out of nowhere, they had just like the cerebral conversation. Yeah. He's like, "Are you gonna rip me off, you foreign fuck?" And he's like, "No, I'm not gonna rip you off, you American cocksucker." <laughs> Here's a fun fact about swearing. I believe this movie has the most recorded f bombs in movie history right now. Oh really? I think it just beat out, uh, well, Goodfellas, probably. <laughs> Goodfellas Sorry, or Scarface. I can't and just to clarify, his name is, I, I believe it's Jean, and uh, forgive my uh, pronunciation on his last name, but I believe it's Dujardin. Dujardin? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. I don't fucking speak <laughs> French. I don't either, but he's, uh, I really like him. The artist, yeah, he's, he's a strong actor, that's for sure. I mean, the artist wasn't my favorite. English. Yeah, the artist wasn't my favorite film ever, but, like, He's really good. And that's just another, like, super big name brought in for just a small part of the movie. Scorsese. Just, oh, I would bring Scorsese coffee <laughs> for $1 an hour. If he offered me that job, I'd do it. Oh, yeah. Actually, if he offered me that job and I had to pay him $1 an hour, but, I'd yeah, I, do I would do that still, yeah. A buck an hour to give Scorsese coffee. That'd be time coffee. well spent, for sure. Oh, for sure. Just let me stand somewhere and watch you work. <laughs> Scorsese just makes the movies I like, want sorry, to make. Sorry, sir, don't of. mind the boner. It's nothing personal. Yeah, it's it's a nerd boner. It's no, nothing sexual. Nothing gay about this. But, <laughs> yeah, Scorsese's the man. Um, I hope he does at least one more big hit like this before he retires, man. Like, I really... I honestly think he'll die directing. Like, uh, do, cause it, also, it seems like he kind of works in these little cycles where he kind of re- does try and reproduce stuff, sort of, because uh, to me... It seems like he did those um, sort of films, uh, like these sort of films with Goodfellas and Casino, mm-hmm. and may- maybe Mean Streets. He kind of fit into there, um, but at the same time, something like Taxi Driver, for instance. Uh, Taxi Driver. It's, it seems like he's almost trying to kind of go back to that sort of visual style when he did Bringing Out the Dead. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where it seems yeah. like he's trying to do it. Some of them don't work, some of them do. And that's where I think, like, you know what I mean? After The Departed, where he kind of had that little sort of standstill yeah. and then with Hugo and whatnot. I think now it's just coming full circle where I think he's going to start maybe pumping out a little more high I hope caliber so. stuff like this. I hope so. If you can pull, like, one of these caliber films off every other year, well, let's say, like, every two years, there's a new Scorsese flick, and it's on this level. Mind you, we don't want him to overwork himself because, you know. No, I mean, it's fucking, I'm he not, not going to tell Scorsese. He Scors- is a senior yeah. citizen. I'm not going to tell Scorsese how hard to work. He can. He would punch me in the mouth. <laughs> or he'd get somebody else to punch He'd me probably in the have mouth. some young Italian fella yeah. punch you in the mouth. Some guy named Rocco to punch <laughs> me in the mouth. Oh, yeah. He's, fuck, I love Scorsese. I hope I get to meet him before I die. Don't see it happening, but, you know, one can dream. One can dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. Well, um, yeah, is there anything else you want to discuss? Hmm? No? Uh, yeah, I think that is going to wrap up our uh, our discussion of The Wolf of Wall Street. We, we That was a long-winded conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, in closing, what would you say about this film? Like, what would you... Um, I guess if you want to rank it, go ahead, but if there's a closing thought on The Wolf of Wall Street you want to tell the people? Yeah, if I, if I wanted to rank it, I would say that it's it's easily... This would get full a top, like just 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't say that about pretty much any films, including some of my favorites. This easily jumped right to the top mm-hmm. for being one of my favorite films of all time. And yeah, I think I, if you if you like any of Scorsese's early work, if you like films about uh, like uh, the broiler, Boiler Room, for instance, mm-hmm. if you like Boiler Room uh, or anything that's kind of about the sort of, you know, nitty-gritty 
kind of work of people that just kind of con people. Mm -hmm. This is the fucking one for you. Yeah, this is the pinnacle of, like, stockbroker. Like, Broiler Room's good. I'm not going to say forget Broiler Room, but this is the king. Like, forget, uh, what was that, Martin? Uh, Was it just called Wall Street? With uh, Shia LaBeouf that came Mm -hmm. out a little while ago. Forget that film. This is the ultimate... The ultimate movie about money. Well, and that was Wall Street too, but yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, it was the the sequel, or whatever. But uh, yeah, if old school Scorsese fans, new school Scorsese fans, like uh, this is a callback to his like old school way of storytelling, but done like in a modern way, like in his version of a modern way. Because I guess it was shot digital, and there is like there is special effects in it, and like CGI shots and stuff. But did were they ever noticed? Like were they ever called to the front? They just blend it in for me. Just, just in the in the uh, in the boat the yacht, scene, yeah, yeah. In, in the which was of the yacht, but. I I can relate. How are you going to film a, well, a yacht? Like you said about Wall Street, like Wall Street's even known as one of the better films, like especially with with the subject matter, because it's not exactly something most people would think would be that exciting, right? Yeah, I agree. You know what I mean, honestly, this Leonardo DiCaprio's portrayal of Jordan Belfort makes Gordon Gecko look like a fucking chump. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um... This is up there with Scorsese's best work ever, in my opinion. It might be his best film ever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm going to wait like to let it sink in. I mean, it's been out for, you know, I guess not even a month yet, and I've watched it three times all the way through. Like, We're going to see how many times I end up watching it, and that's when I'll decide if it's like his greatest work or not because I watch Goodfellow because he... I watch like, all of his films pretty much with a few exceptions in any given year, like throughout the year i'll make my way through all of his films just for fun and uh i'm gonna be watching this a bunch more times like (laughs) it's i'm looking forward to the dvd uh this is the best film in 2013 and it came out with five days left in the year i yeah it's a great film it's one of my favorites of definitely of 2013 and if not the last decade probably it's it's great go see it i'd give it a uh a healthy 10 out of 10 We'll see if that wears off, though. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just I'm fanboying out hard right now. We'll see. But go see Wolf of Wall Street.